How's everyone doing this morning? I'll try to stand directly in the light. First of all, I just want to say thank you to Monster Color, because this is crazy. Someone said I should laminate it and put it in my front yard. So I just thought about it, though. I'm really lucky to get Monster Color as a sponsor, because if it was a bank, I'd just get like a bag of dum-dums and, and pens, right, and ink pens. So thank you, Monster Color, for that. I appreciate that. So yeah, I'm not going to try to be too long. I only got, what, 20 minutes? So I'll try to wrap my uh, story about Bitcoin and how I got into it under three principles that I pretty much live by, love, freedom, and light. So when we started in Bitcoin, we were out in uh, Silicon Valley pitching a completely different company. And one of the uh, VCs, when they were talking to us, said, have you guys heard of Bitcoin? I thought he said big coin, like Bitcoin. Um, and Leif, you know, Leif listens better than I do. So Leif was like, no, it's Bitcoin. So he gets out. He looks it up. We look at you know, in your startup arrogance. You're like, this has nothing to do with what I'm building. So push it back. All of a sudden, the price skyrockets, which is probably what brought a lot of you guys' attention to it now. And I said, look, I need to look at this Bitcoin thing again. So I go back and look at it. And what I found was the Satoshi Nakamoto white paper. And the Satoshi Nakamoto white paper basically represented one thing to me, and that's freedom. So when you talk about Bitcoin, what Bitcoin was basically built by, who it was built by, was cypherpunks. People who kind of looked at the system as being unfair or like they, they felt like that uh, we should have more freedom and control over our money. And that's how I looked at it. I have a BA in, in finance and I know how to program. So it's the best marriage ever for me, right? It's like those two things together, those two disciplines together, there's nothing better than Bitcoin. So I started researching and looking into it. But the thing that drew me to it was the fact that now all of a sudden you didn't have to trust a bank. You could be your own bank. You can control your own funds. If I went to a bank right now and said, hey, uh, I want to set up an API to move money from my account to my buddy in Pakistan that sells shoes, number one, they're probably like, no. <laughs> right? And number two, I'll probably be on some watch list, right? But, but I have a buddy in Pakistan that actually sells shoes. And if I want to get shoes, I can send them some Bitcoin. And I don't have to worry about being on a watch list, anybody worrying about it. And all I'm doing is buying shoes. Because sometimes in this country, right, we tend to look at certain people and look down on certain people and say we can't trade with certain people. But there are certain people in that country that are just like me and you who are not about doing the various things. As a matter of fact, probably the majority of the people in those countries are not about doing the various things. So if I want to be able to trade and have commerce with them, that's what I feel like we should be able to do. Another thing I saw in it was the fact that if you can have control over your money, then you could probably build all types of other applications that deal with money on top of it. And so I, I thought really hard. Is anybody aware of the Jobs Act? Anybody raise your hand if you're aware of the Jobs Act? Entrepreneurs are aware of the Jobs Act. <clears throat> the thing is, is that in this country, right, you and I, unless we're accredited investors, cannot invest in other companies, like straight out invest in, other, in, in brand new companies, because there's a regulation that stops you from investing in other countries. But the same government that put that rule in and that law in is the same one that advertises the lottery to poor people. Kind of funny to me, right? It's like, hmm. So there's these things out called ICOs, and a lot of people hate them. A lot of people love them. But for me, again, it just represents freedom. It allows you to create your own token. It allows you to create your own currency and put it out in the world and then allow people to choose if they want to use it or not. And a lot of people are upset about that, and some Bitcoin maximalists are like, why are you building new currencies? And I'm thinking to myself, there's not a day I wake up and think about the Venezuelan Bolivar. Like, I don't, if you're, in, if you're in a network and that's your currency and you're using it, use it. And I can choose to get in and out, and that's what's cool about this, right? That's what's cool, that's, that's what a, a provides that type of freedom. Because something about regulation that kind of messes with me is sort of like going into a new land as a pioneer, killing all the people off, settling the land, and then making laws that say you can't kill anymore and then punish people by killing them. That's what it feels like to me in the financial space, right? All these guys got up together one time and created this financial, um, this financial marketplace and then they built walls up, huge walls, and said, hey, little guy, you don't know what you're doing with your money. But the rich, the rich guy who left money to his crazy son, he knows what he's doing with his money just because he has money. Right? It's like, here I am, this big, huge black guy from the north end of Lexington, Kentucky, 
which if you, I'm going to let you guys know something. In the tech world, black is not as bad as Lexington. <laughs> I'm serious. The first thing, people don't care about black as much as they care about, oh, my God, you're from Lexington? I'm like, yeah, man, we're from Lexington, right? It's the craziest thing. But what I'm saying is, is that me being from where I'm from and, and growing up how I grew up, and I saw uh, – the, the leader of uh, Big Brothers and Book Sisters camp where I used to go when I was a kid, I was like, me coming from where I come from and doing the things I've done, and I can go out here and build a financial company, a fintech company without anyone telling me I can or cannot, awesome, right? Freedom. So then as you keep moving along and, and as you think about pioneers and you moving forward, pioneers have to get started. They got to get out there and do stuff. And, and what I like to say is pioneers set up camp in the unknown. They are the most comfortable people with discomfort. That's what a pioneer basically is. You can be comfortable in discomfort. With people telling you that Bitcoin sucks, they don't know what it is, I was giving Bitcoin away. I literally was giving Bitcoin away to get people involved in it, and now it's worth $5,600, and people say, you were stupid for giving away. I'm like, why? Why was I stupid? Because at the end of the day, it wasn't about the value to me. It's not about the price skyrocketing. It's about the freedom. It's about the ability to do what you want to do and be creative and build applications that no one can stop you from building if you learn how to code and do them, right? So then it, it moves you along, but you start realizing that with all of this stuff, I'm going to tell you a quick story of what happened when we first got into the space. We built the Bitcoin wallet, the FIBA wallet, and <laughs> we, we get in to be able to speak at one of the largest Bitcoin conferences. And the way I did it, I used a race card to do it because there were no black guys talking. So I was like, hey, man, you're going to need some black people to come and talk. And the dude was like, you know what, you're right. So I go down to Texas. I go down to Texas. But the other thing is, is that not only did I use the race car, we also had an app that was not, you could not get it anywhere on the uh, iPhone, uh, iOS app store, period. Because Apple banned all Bitcoin wallets. Well, we could distribute ours because we think a little bit different, right? Some people call it hood rigging or whatever, but we figured out... <laughs> A creative way. No, but it wasn't really hood rigging because what we did was just like people who are disadvantaged a lot of times, they look in the middle of things, right? Where everybody else sees the outside, you look into the middle and figure out how you can mess with it to make it for your benefit. So what we did was we figured out that Apple would allow you to distribute an application if you use the enterprise license. So we were like, hmm, how can we have an enterprise that a lot of people can join? So we picked up this old organization structure called a co-op. Nobody, when we registered the co-op, the woman was like, what the heck is this? No one has registered a co-op in Kentucky since probably 74 or something. But we used that structure and then people at first, and this is what happened, so we go in, people at first were like, they must be scammy, there's no way they can get around Apple, right? So we go into the conference and I see a table full of my colleagues, my peers, and they're talking about the technology. And I've, I've spent six, seven months learning about cryptography, learning about elliptic curves, learning about everything that I possibly could, consensus, everything. So I go in because I'm ready to talk shop. I sit down at the table, and everybody at the table got up and left. As soon as I sat down, I sat down, they got up, except two people. One guy looks, he said, hey, man, so what do you do? I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm glad he asked. So I get out the wallet. I said, look, you got an iPhone? He was like, yeah. I said, watch this. So I said, what's your email? He gave me his email. I sent him an email. And the app, when he hit the, hit the link in the email, it started downloading on his phone. He was like, what the heck? You got a Bitcoin wallet that can get on the iPhone? I was like, yeah. Guess what the first thing he said to me was? Not like, this is awesome. He said, who did you steal this from? First thing he said. I go, is that because I'm black, man? Is that what you're trying to do? But I was just kidding with him. And the guy across knew I was trolling him. I was trolling him bad. I was like, I can't believe you would do that. And the guy goes, listen, man, he's just trolling you. And he goes, no, seriously, how did you do this? And I said, well, and I told him how we did it. Here's the coolest part about it. He gets up from the table, walks over to everybody that left, and told everybody, and they all came back. See, a lot of times you hear this uh, quote that says, pioneers, you can tell a pioneer by the ones with the arrows in their back. Right? The people who take all the stuff first, who go out and make all the mistakes early. But I wouldn't have it any other way. Because I'm telling you, I've been to tech conference after tech conference and maybe be the only black guys there, me and Leif. And let me tell you, it's almost like being in a National Geographic because the photographer, he finds every way to take a picture of you. He's like, Ch -ch -ch. 
I took John Meister with us. We were at uh, GDC. I said, John, watch this. So John was watching. So we started watching the photographer and not the people on the stage. And you would not believe how many different angles we have of us. And the next day at the conference, guess who's up on the big board? Because we got to show diversity, right? That's what pioneers do. There aren't too many people who come out of my neighborhood. I mean, my mom, I remember she had a stack of AOL discs before we got on the Internet, right? Wasn't nobody fooling with that stuff. Nobody was messing around with this, with technology and stuff like that when I was younger. Nobody. Wasn't no computer clubs in my neighborhood, right? So I felt like I was already sort of just what I do. I'm just sort of a pioneer. But what that all comes from is love. Because here's the thing you got to understand about me. My faith really dictates a whole lot of what I do, straight up and down. Now, love, when I think about love, there's one great example of love to me, and that is, that is Jesus Christ. And what he shows me is that love really equals sacrifice. What are you willing to put up with? What are you willing to go through? If you really love something, you will sacrifice. You will give, right? Sacrifice, you will give of yourself. So for me, it's like this is nothing. Because when we made the FIBA wallet, we made a wallet that you could use, that your grandmother could use. That's what we were trying to do, get everybody in on it, right? We, wanted to, we really wanted to get a wallet that everybody could use and give to the people. We didn't make any money off the FIBA wallet. We didn't make a dime off the FIBA wallet. And we did some really cool stuff like coin IDs. We were the first people to introduce names where you could just pay directly to a name. We were also the first people to introduce being able to buy gift cards directly within the wallet. So you could go to Whole Foods with your Bitcoin and buy Whole Foods gro uh, groceries. And Ian Friley, my man over here, helped us with the best commercial in Bitcoin ever. It's still on the Internet. That's what you can do. When you start thinking about it from a position of love and start thinking about it from a position, that's what drives you forward as a pioneer. Because here's the other thing. There's other ways to be a pioneer, and they not always have anything to do with love. There's two sides, right? There are some people who are pioneers and go out for greed. They'll take what they can, kill who they want. Me, I feel like instead of tearing down, I build up. That's what I live by. When I go into a space, I build up. I didn't go into that space with all of those guys at that table in Texas to try to tear them down. I went there to say, hey, man, what can I add to this? How can I add value to this? And as a pioneer, that's what makes you start to settle because it's the love for your community, the love for the people around you. You start building up, you start building up the community. You start pay, you paved the way. You literally sacrifice for someone else. And that's the coolest thing, and that's creatives. I always think about my dad. My dad's here. He hasn't really ever been to a business talk with Matt ever, right? But my dad's right there. My dad, my whole life, he was a man. That's crazy. It hit me. Oh, um, he was a painter, right? My dad was an artist, and he ain't really had time to do it like he used to. But I used to look up to him, and I have a I have a painting right above my desk that he made, right? So he's a creative. My dad's a creative all day, and he does it in his towel work now through mosaic. So that's, he still does it, but. What I realize is, is that a canvas, a painter is a pioneer, right? Because a canvas is empty. There's nothing there. And, and when you put your brush to that canvas, you are settling that canvas. You are literally settling that canvas. You are making something that was not there before. You're being creative because we all were born to create. And you know how I know that? Because every kid with a crayon in his hand scribbles. Every kid with a crayon in his hand. It doesn't matter what he scribbles on. He scribbles. We, every last one of us in here were born to create. We were born to create more than we consume. Clearly, I don't do that with food, but that's what, that's what we are as humans. We are here to create. We are here to love one another. We are here to connect with each other. And when you create and you settle that canvas, right, and you build your masterpiece and you create something, the next thing you have to do is be light. And what you have to do is be light. And what I mean by that is light attracts. When my dad would finish with a painting, put it up for people to see. That's the same thing with this whole Bitcoin thing, right? All of these years, people telling me I'm crazy. Why are you in this Bitcoin? What is Bitcoin? It don't make sense. Who backs it? Who's behind it? The whole nine. And now all of a sudden, those same people, Lamar, how do I get some Bitcoin? Oh, my gosh, I can't believe it's 5,600. I can't believe that it's so high. But at the beginning, when I was trying to tell everybody, the first thing they did was shoot me away. Get out of here, Lamar. And I was looking crazy, though. I had crazy fro and talking to you on YouTube. I looked like the guy with the full head on, right? But that's the thing. Once you start doing it and you figure out what it is you want to do, 
and you start building things, then you become light. And light attracts. Light brings people in. Everybody in here has light within them. Every single person. Because if you have that creativity, you have that light within you. And so you got to stand up on something. Let everybody see you. Let it all hang out like this crazy thing. <laughs> right? You got to let people see who it is you are, what you do. You can't create things and leave it in the basement. Because you'll die, somebody will find it, and they'll put it up, and it'll be worth billions. It's literally what happens. You have to let the world see your light right now because all of this other space is darkness. You know the first thing the cameraman told me, don't get in the darkness. Think about that. Don't move into the darkness so they can see you, so they can feel you. Every person in here, you came here because you guys are creative. You guys know what you want to do. You know what you're working on. And there's somebody out there who's telling you and shooting you in the back with these arrows. I'm going to get in the darkness real quick <laughs> with these arrows, right? They're hitting you in the back with these arrows. And the question is, are you going to go through it with love? See, I could have got really upset at those guys that left the table, but I stuck through it. And people have heard the other stories in Texas, but it is Texas. I love you, Texas. <laughs> the other stories that happened in Texas, but I, I stuck through it. Leif and I stick through it. We keep moving. People know our story. People know what we've been through. But none of that matters. You know why? Because at the end of the day, we're going to keep shining our light. So that's pretty much all I have. I, I'm sorry I didn't talk real technical about Bitcoin and all of that kind of stuff. But if you have any questions, I think uh, Celeste told me to leave a couple minutes for questions. And how did I do on time? Good? Yeah, does anybody have any questions? I can get technical now. I just had to get that out. I had to get the why out, right? Anybody have any questions? Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Oh. Here's the thing, and this is what I have to let you know. The first person is not the only pioneer. You know that, Luke. Right? I mean, Nick, I called you Luke. That's bad business. Nick, you know that. It's the first person out is not the only pioneer. It wasn't just Daniel Boone, right? Davy Crockett. Some dude named Jim, right? <laughs> like, more people came out. So what I'm saying is, is that if it's in you to do, screw the arrows. Screw them. If it's, if it's what you're supposed to be doing, who cares about the arrows? They just become, you know... It's a piece of who you are. You break them off and keep it moving, right? So I think in tech in, in Lexington, Kentucky, the great thing is it's big success stories, and I, I hate that Wes Keltner is more popular in my house than I am um, because of his game. I think he's doing it next month or something. But, yeah, um, because of people like Wes Keltner with these huge successes and my man Drew over at Make Time, I mean, that helps a lot. But they're still coming out of Kentucky, man. People still only see us. Somebody literally thinks we have chickens on our runway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you watching too many movies. Um, any other questions? Yeah, okay. My daughter back in the back. <laughs> I truthfully think it's just about providing access, number one, which the library does, and I, I love the library, North End Library. Um, but I also think it's just about putting things like this up, right? Putting more people who are more diverse in front of crowds. And instead of just inviting it, inviting people on Instagram and those kind of things, like get out in the North End of Lexington, tell people about it, right? Go to the streets that people are traditionally afraid of which I don't know why in Lexington, Kentucky. It's like, it's the most beautiful city in the world. Like, seriously. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but seriously, I think, I think the truth is, is just change the marketing. I talk about this in Bitcoin all the time. No one markets to anyone except for the people they think want to see it. But some people don't even know they want to have it. It's like good chili, right? It's like nobody knows they want to have it till they take a taste. 
Like when you taste it, it looks crazy. You got beans and all this stuff in there, and then you taste it. You're like, my wife makes the coldest chili on earth. But and cold means good, just for anybody. <laughs> just to well, my wife makes great chili, but that's the thing. Like, truthfully, we have to learn to feed people, give people a taste of what it is, give them a different perspective. Like, get in those places that you think that people want to do it and get in there and show them some stuff. So, so I saw somebody else, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yup. No, it's my, man. Third or fourth? Yeah. This is a good question. There are local resources. They just, there are not as many resources, which means just like anyone else who has very few resources, they tend to be a little bit stiff. That's just the truth. I mean, when you don't have a lot, and that's why I always say in Lexington, the strategy we should take here is spray and pray. Put a little bit of money in more companies' hands. I think it's what uh, uh, Nick and those guys are doing over at Awesome Me. But I think that needs to be the ultimate strategy here, is to spray and then let entrepreneurs be entrepreneurs. Plant as many seeds as possible, right? Throw as many seeds out there as possible, and you're going to get a couple trees, and then those trees will create more seeds. So I think that's the thing. In Lexington, it's just we don't have a lot of – to be honest, we probably have tons of resources. I mean, we got billionaire horse farms out here, right? Um, but those resources aren't necessarily active, actively investing and aren't actively putting money into the ecosystem. But if they did, and we just learned to kind of throw as much money out as we possibly could every single year, right? This the kind of the way the state's doing with these films. Like, do the same thing with startups, right? So, yeah. Here's the greatest thing, right? The greatest thing about Bitcoin. The security breach had nothing to do with the protocol itself. That's the problem. Everybody thought, oh, my gosh, Bitcoin's dead. But the truth of, of the matter was it had to do with a bad, it's almost had, like Lehman Brothers, right? A bad bank. It didn't cut, shut down the entire financial system because Lehman Brothers died. It's like that's the same thing that happened. With, it was Mount Gox. That's probably what you're talking about. Mount Gox got hit. A lot of people's Bitcoin wallets get hit, right? But those are their personal wallets. If you, because I, I have to say this, the FIBA wallet, while it was in existence, never lost a dime. Never lost a dime. Okay, can't say that. It lost money with code early on, but again, that was my fault, right? And I paid those people back. But uh, other than that, after we got it solid, never lost a dime. So it's like, that's the thing, right? That's the part that people don't understand with Bitcoin. That's what, to me, makes it really powerful. Because the only thing that controls Bitcoin is the code. And of course, now you have people who write the code that are now arguing. It's the funniest thing to me. The cypherpunks have now become what they didn't like. Which kind of happens with power and money, right? It's like you go against the system all of this time, and then all of a sudden, you're the one with all the power and the money, and you become the system. And now you're trying to stop all the people going against the system. It's the funniest thing. That's why I say everyone should just be able to make whatever currency they want and then let the people decide what they want to get into. And if you can't take a little bit of competition, you probably shouldn't be in the game. So, yeah, one more question. Uh-oh. See, that's not fair. So we got two. We got, we give, I'm a, I have to take both. I have to take both. Yeah, right straight back. I, I think there are, but I think that anyone who tries to uh, make it less free, make it more censorship, uh, what what's the word I should say? Because right now, Bitcoin is censorship resistant. Uh, allow more censorship on it. I don't think that's good. Because at the end of the day, more bad stuff happens with the U.S. dollar than anything. We don't shut the U.S. dollar down. But some of us have it in our pocket. Most of us don't. We got cards. But, <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? I, I, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like if a guy, if a guy had a pecan pie and he was walking around putting sriracha sauce on it, 
It's your choice if you want to eat it or not, right? <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. If somebody's doing bad stuff with it and not using it in a way that it should, it's intended with some whipped cream or some ice cream or something, right? Then that's your choice if you want to eat the sriracha, the sriracha pie, right? That's the thing. So I think that's the. I, I think that it should be free, just like the internet. The internet's free. People use it for all kinds of bad stuff, but on the other hand, they use it for all kinds of good stuff too. So, yes, sir. To keep changing. Literally, to keep looking out. Yeah. I mean, that's. I think that's the biggest thing. I think. The whole idea is to see with your eyes closed, which is called vision to me, right? Old preachers, the old country preachers say, if I get into my mind's eye, right? That's what I think it's going to take. It takes vision. It takes the ability to associate things together. Because we as creatives, we can't ever say that everything, anything came from nothing because everything that we create is probably a combination of things that are already here, right? So it's just recycled. Everything is recycled on the earth constantly. Ideas, everything, just recycle it. Ain't nothing new under the sun. So I think in five years, I think if we keep looking forward, there's going to be innovations that are built on things that we already had, that people made a little bit faster, a little bit cheaper, a little bit better. But I think if we continue to have vision and move forward and keep looking into the future and change when we need to change, and who knows when you need to change, right? But at the end of the day, it's like just basically being able to keep moving and changing as the future changes. So. Anything? Thank you all.